everybody, Chris Sev here. Today we are going to be talking about Alpine JS, a new lightweight JavaScript framework. So you might be saying, Chris, another one? Well, yeah, you know what? Alpine's really cool, and I think I would reach for it, even though I am a pretty big React fan. I think it does a great job at being a utility type of JavaScript framework. It builds itself similar to how kind of jQuery is or how Tailwind is to CSS. Alpine is to JavaScript. It's a set of really quick tools you can add on top of existing markup so that you can add functionality, add interactivity. But unlike React or Vue, you don't have to take over the whole application and make a single page app. I know React and Vue can do what Alpine does, but uh, let's get into it. Let's see how Alpine does things and why it's so cool. So to start off, Alpine is very simple. You take the script tag, and then you add an X data to create an Alpine component. And now you get the Alpine directives that are similar to how views directives look at click X show X bind instead of V show V bind. It's all right here under the attributes right here. So there's X data X bind X on. So you can quickly see the entire API of Alpine JS right here, 15 attributes, six properties and two methods. What I want to deal with is just getting started with Alpine, getting your feet wet, seeing how things work. So in that regard, here we are in a code pen. We are going to start off by going into our JavaScript panel right here and saying external scripts. Let's add in Alpine. There we go. And now that we have Alpine, we can start using it. But just like Tailwind, if I add Tailwind, I don't need to write custom CSS. If I added Alpine, I don't need to write custom JavaScript. So are we going to work in those two panels? No, we're going to be right in our HTML panel. So let's say I wanted to create a button. I'll create a button right here. And then we'll say click me. Let's say I wanted to listen for this click event and make sure that something happened to it. And we could do that with Alpine. So if JavaScript, you were doing it, you would do an add event listener. With Alpine, there are two steps. One, we have to create an Alpine component. And that's with X data. So this is called a directive and you just attach them to existing HTML or markup that you have. And this is really great if you already have an application like a Laravel app, server side rendered app, and you just want to add some functionality like clicks or fetches and stuff like that. So we have X data, which is Alpine's way to say, Hey, this is an Alpine component. Hey, Alpine, look at this button and make sure that you are listening for any changes or any events on here. And speaking of events, we're going to say X on click is equal to, and we're going to say alert hi there. And that's how we are going to listen for the click event on this button. If I go ahead and click on this button, we get the alert that says hi there. So just like that, we were able to listen for an event on this button using X dash on and then binding it to the HTML event that's going to happen. All right, so that looks good right there. Let's take this a step further and see what we can do with this. Let's say we had this button right here. And this button is going to be responsible for showing or hiding show or hide this div right here, div, I am content that should disappear and reappear. So we are going to listen for the click event on the button, and then we are going to hide or show the div based on that click event. So we have to store a variable somewhere. We're going to open up a div that surrounds everything. And this entire div is going to be our Alpine component. And we're going to do that with X data. Now we have to add on some data, a variable to show if we are showing or hiding that div. And we can actually create content inside of this object right here is showing is equal to false. So we're passing an object into Alpine's X data directive and saying, hey, Alpine, this is the data you'll have for this specific section of HTML. So now we are going to bind on this button X on 
click, we're going to say is showing is equal to not is showing. So we'll just toggle this back and forth depending on clicking this button. And now we can hide or show this right here by saying x dash show is equal to is showing. So notice that it already hid itself because the variable starts off as false. And I'll click this button and it should toggle on and off. So look how we were able to add that much functionality with just a few directives. We had x data, x on, and x show. And if you go back to the Alpine docs, there they are. We have 15 attributes and any mixing and matching of all of these is going to be able to build out really fun interactions with our HTML or our markup. We can even bind the text right here to x text because you want this to toggle between show or hide. So we can say x dash text is equal to is showing. It's going to show if we are showing, then we're going to say hide it. Else we're going to say show it. And now we don't need that. And now it says show or hide. There we go. So we used another directive, x text, to add in a little bit more functionality. All right, so how does Alpine compare to React or Vue? Well, I think React and Vue are a little bit larger frameworks. They can do small stuff like this, but I think they do well when they excel into multiple components, into full single page applications, especially when you jump into Next.js or full stack frameworks like that. Where Alpine excels is you want to compare it more to jQuery or vanilla JavaScript. This is a really nice shorthand for not having to have written a lot of vanilla JavaScript. If I wrote JavaScript, I would have had to const button is equal to document dot query selector the button. And then we would have had to const hide let's say description is equal to the same thing here. And already look how much I'm writing, right? And we would have just did like the div or probably that would need a class description. And then you would say button dot add event listener. And look, look at this. I'm already tired of writing uh, click. There we go. And then I already made mistakes, but look at Alpine. You can just go here and have the data right there in this object and you can listen for it and then affect your HTML and your markup by the other directives. All right, next up, let's delete all that. Let's talk about looping over a list. Alpine does a great job at this. JavaScript front-end frameworks usually need to loop over lists. So let's see how we can do it. If we have a new array in here called people, and I'll do myself, Chris, and let's do cap and lin. Let's go over here and loop over them. So we'll have a UL right there. And to do this is going to be a little different than what you may be used to with React where you dot map. This is probably closer to view where you do a x v4. Here we're going to do template x4 is equal to person and people. And we'll close that template. And then here we'll say li x text is equal to person. And that's how we'll loop over a list. And there you go. You see our li's right there. So the template, I think, is what throws people off. That's just a way that we can look for what to loop over. And then this is what actually gets injected back into the markup, into the DOM. But if you know that syntax x-4, that's a pretty good way to loop over things, especially if you're coming from Vue.js. All right, let's do a little bit more with this example. I want to add an input right here. So let's say loop loop over people. And then here, let's add an input to add a person. So with that in mind, let's do a form. Form, an input, type is text, and a button where we say add person. Okay, so the way we do this is we need to listen for this input, bind it to a variable, and then when we click this add person button, we can add them to the list. So the way we do that is we are going to add a text variable right here. We'll just say new person. 
and we'll call that blank. And let's talk about a new directive that we haven't talked about yet is x dash model view person. So we are binding this input text right here to this input right here. So the value of that, and when we type into it, it'll get updated. So it's a two way data binding where the text is bound into it and we listen for the event and update the text accordingly. Two way data binding is pretty close to magic, I think. Let's have a div, we'll say x text is equal to new person. And let's check this out. So if I start typing into this, you can see that this text gets updated. So it's binding two ways and listening for the event. Super, super cool stuff right there. And now we listen for the form input where we say x dash on submit. We're going to add the new person value to the people array. So we're going to say this dot people dot push this dot new person. And this is there to represent the object of our x data of this Alpine component. So we're really referencing this object right here. Let's see if it works. A uh, new person. I'll click add. And there we have a problem. We have not found. So what actually happened is that the HTML form, when it's submitted, it will refresh the page, which is default for HTML forms. If you were in JavaScript, you would have to do e.preventDefault. Here, Alpine has a great tool for this, .prevent, similar to Vue.js. So now if I refresh, there we go. I can say, let's add in another person. Let's go for auto. I'll press enter right there. And it doesn't seem to be working. Let's go see our inspect. Let's go see our console. What's going on in here? Cannot read property push of undefined. So it looks like this dot people isn't defined. And let me show you this because this is a good tactic. If I have my object right here, new person and people right here, you might be wondering, Chris, is there a way we can move a little bit more logic into this Alpine component object right here? And that's absolutely valid. We can do a method right here called add and say this dot people dot push this dot new person. So now we're moving this. I think the problem here is this doesn't really know that it's up here because it's not in the object itself. But now, since this add method is inside of this object, this will reference this object right here. So now we just go over here and we just say add like that. Even cleaner. So let's try this again. Let's add auto back in. I'll press enter. And there we go. There's auto. So that actually works correctly. This add method references this object correctly with the this keyword. I said this too many times. But overall, I think that's a really great example of all the things that Alpine can do is bind itself to markup, add some quick functionality for submissions, for button clicks, for clicking. Really helpful there. The Alpine docs do a great job at giving you more examples. I think this is great for building out smaller applications for adding on functionality. Maybe you have a header where you want to toggle the menu bar. Maybe you have uh, a couple button clicks that maybe add stickers and stuff, but nothing too major. If you want single page apps, probably reach for React or Vue. That's not really the job of Alpine, and it doesn't try to be. It tries to be a lightweight framework you can add on to existing markup. The last thing I want to leave you with is very similar to Vue x dash on, v dash on in view can be shorthanded to the at symbol. At submit.prevent is a good way to just see uh, kind of a shorthand to see an event being attached to an element. All right, that wraps it up. Please definitely check out the Alpine docs. If you go to this dive in button on the top right there, there are some great docs, some great examples, and there's a lot of really, really fun tricks here under the essentials section. And there's also examples right on the docs for building a counter, a dropdown, search input, all that good stuff right there. So Alpine's very cool. If you did like this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks.